Pteranodon is one of the biggest pterosaurs. One of the most iconic traits is the protruding skull crest. Its solid and sharp beak is particularly dangerous. Hello everybody and welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 Species Field Guide report. And for today's we've got the Pteranodon, the second species field guide for the pterosaurs. Last week we got Dimorphodon, but now it's time to shed our light onto the Pteranodon, the one we all knew was coming eventually. And I must say, it was very nice to see. And one thing you might notice is that the head crest pattern is actually different from the previous time we actually got to see it, where in the previous time we saw it, I believe it had a blue um, pattern on its head, and this time it's the classic red from Jurassic World. Even though I'm pretty sure there was a blue variant in Jurassic World, but most people remember the red one. But anyway, anyway, it's just showing us that for the Trandons and, and Dimorphodons, we'll be able to change their skin patterns just like the regular dinosaurs, which is great to see. Now, this species field guide doesn't reveal too much. Like the first one, all it shows is the Trandon flying or around in its enclosure, letting us look at all the um, customization inside of the aviary, because we will be able to do all the landscaping for it, which is awesome. But in the background for that, we get to see um, the Pterandons eating from the fish feeder, which we theorized was actually returning in the previous one with Dimorphodon, because we got a little bit of a glimpse of it in one of the background shots, but it was very hard to see, so some people weren't 100% sure, but it is confirmed. Fish feeders are back, and in this little shot that actually happens in the background of the main one, we get to see, like, I think it's like six Trandons, like, all flying over it, trying to get their fill, and it seems to me like that could be their way of showing, hey, the Trandons don't have enough food in this enclosure, you're gonna need to give them another one, or they're gonna break out, which is a nice little detail I will praise because that's just showing them more alive. It's like, oh no, there's not enough fish feeders, they're gonna just break out instantly. No, you see them actually tr trying to fight over the little bit of fish in there, so you'll need to get another f um, fish feeder for them, which is pretty good in my opinion. And in the next one, we get a full shot of um, some of them actually eating from the fish feeder. We see two of them, one flying in, one already dining on them. And in the background, we see some more pteranodons actually flying around, including one actually landing on the um, hatchery for the aviary, which I didn't think that was going to be possible. I thought there would be like some sort of barrier that would not allow it to happen, but I was wrong. The Pteranodon was able to land on it, even though when it turns around, it actually does it way quicker, which could have been a glitch, but remember, this is just alpha footage. It's not beta yet, so there's some fixes they need to do, so we'll let them know about that, but it's awesome to see. Like, we get to see them land, and, like, they're, like, perched on it like birds. It's awesome. Them. And in the final shot, actually, we get to see one Pteranodon actually escape the aviary and fly into the open world, which, unlike for the first game where it would just fly up all the way to the sun before disappearing, probably burning its wings and secretly crashing to the ground without us seeing, this time they actually are flying among the people. Well, we don't get to see that, we just get to see it, like, hover in the sky, which looks awesome still. We get a lovely view of the park, and we get a look at the returning monorail, which looks a little bit different, and I didn't even realize the monorail was coming back. I heard rumors about it, but now we got confirmation. The monorail is back, and we get a look at some of the new buildings that I don't know what are, but we'll find out eventually. And this Pteranodon Species Field Guide, I love just because it's basically like, hey, remember how in the first game Pteranodon was basically a fishbowl, it did nothing? Well, look at this, and you get to see it doing all these unique things, like flying the way it wants to, eating from the fish feeders and f fighting over them, landing on the buildings and also trees, all that stuff, it's awesome. But also we get some news from the forums, 
about this guy, which the main ones we got are very similar to the ones with Dimorphodon, such as they can attack people. It doesn't say they can't attack dinosaurs, though. That's a little strange, but it says that you'll need to open safety shelters for them before they get swooped up by Tyrannons, which is going to be awesome to see. And also we get a little bit more information about how they'll expand their territories, like the Dimorphodon if they break out, all that jazz. Jazz. But that is it, guys. That is the species field guide for Dimorphod not Dimorphodon, for Tyrannodon. Did you enjoy it? Are you excited about it in this game? I cannot wait to see what the next avian species is. I hope it's something like Quetzalcoatlus, Tapijarosaurus. I don't know. No. What do you guys think will be the next ter pterosaur? Leave in the comments, and if you're you're even more excited for this. But guys, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate the like, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to join the hunt. Be safe, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye